Keith, a win in the most dramatic of fashions there. Your side uh, had to dig in at times, but in the end, probably just edged it. Yeah, well, we did edge it. That's what I do know. Right? It's all about results. I was happy where we started. The goal we scored was superb. But it was always going to be a central defender's game today. You know, and it was going downhill sour for us with respect to once they equalised, you know, they, they kept getting in behind and in between our two central defenders. So uh, I had to make the change. I'm not happy about making the change because I believe that Harrison's got a, a bright future. He's got a lot of superb components, but I had to make the decision to try and win the game and avoid losing it at that point at 2-1. I couldn't let it go to 3-1. Uh, so it worked, as simple as that. The education is actually picking up results and learning when you're winning. You know, I think if we'd won six out of our first eight games, there's a possibility I might have left Berrison on today. You know, but I couldn't afford to. Results will be, the, the, the results, positive results, will determine my future at this football club and any other football club. And that's always going to be the case. So I had to turn the game on its head and make some harsh decisions. Was it a brave decision? Uh, 30 seconds before well, half time. Put it this way, I'd rather make a decision and get it wrong than not make a decision and wait and see what happens. So, you know, I, I, back, I back myself when I make decisions and even if I make those decisions and turn wrong, I'll still back myself, look myself in the mirror and know I've, I've done something instead of like uh, allowing something to happen. But there's no question about it, Morrison and Greg were, Gregory were bullying. I were right on side, we were getting in the channel and, you know, I, I, from a it's not embarrassment from a point of view where uh, I wanted to wait till half time but Morrison just got in again behind uh, behind Morrison and it was a shame really because it was a nice lesson for him today against two excellent strikers you know Morrison's been there seen it done it we believe Gregory's a championship bound player or Premier League if you like and it was very difficult learning in in match situations there today but I had to make the decisions there's no question about that for, for all the speed that Keane doesn't have is there before it happens. So he's got the speed of brain, speed of thought. So I, I had no hesitation in making the change. Two goals you conceded, one were you know, a bit of a scru scrappy bundled goal and a, a, a bit of a soft penalty, but your side came back and responded from that. No, they're a very dangerous side. You know, the two strikers that they have on the pitch and the way that they play, they're, they're really, really difficult to compete against. And uh, at this standard, them two strikers in any side, wow. Without giving too much away, at half-time, how was you with? Was it a shouting and bawling or yeah. was it a, a, a cool Basically, plan yeah. You know, listen, there's, there's futures, there's careers, you know, in, in the balance. Like, the last thing I want to do is be a manager of a football club who gets relegated. But we're, we're looking at it. We're still looking at it. You know, with the amount of goals that we're conceding, the manner that we are, we don't look too uncomfortable at times. Maybe today for the first time that I've witnessed. Uh, but we don't look too uncomfortable in games, but... There's a lot of petulance in the decision making and a lot of childish behaviour. You know, somebody said to me last night in the hotel, like, is this a youth team match? I said, well, what do you mean? Like, they went, your team looks ever so young. Well, it certainly is, but they've got to show a bit of maturity. We're not looking at players other than Harrison who've not played a lot of games. Even Joe Bunny's getting up to about 50 games, you know. So it, there is a maturity to the young age that the players have got. You know, and, and, and Harrison's the only one. He's only played 16 games before coming here. So, you know, I'll let him learn and transition, but some of the other parts, they've got to show some more maturity than they have done. Whether it's been forced or whether you've done it tactically, but Joe Bunny having to play a left back, I mean, some of his deliveries from his left foot today has been absolutely tremendous. Good player, good player. He finds it easier looking at the bigger picture, receiving the ball, looking at the opposition's goal. You know, I think when he grows into his body, he'll be a very good striker, play down the centre of the pitch, but he's far happier receiving the ball facing the opponent's uh, goal rather than doing what Morrison did today. He, he possibly could grow into that type of player, but I'm not sure, but at this moment in time, he's doing an unbelievable job at left-back. And I've just told him to go and play as a striker at left-back, and he's doing it ex exceptionally well. You spoke about Keith King coming on and being cool cow at the back, but for us up there looking down, when Stephen Davis came on, he did an unbelievable job. 
yeah, it's it's a difficult one. I've got to pick teams that I feel as will rep, best represent us to challenge any opposition, whether it's in the first 20 minutes, middle 20 minutes, third 20 minutes, last 20 minutes. It's, it's really, really important. But I don't think personally Steve Ols up to the task of 90 minutes. He'll argue, but he's nowhere near as fit as I expect him to be. But what a talent. What a brain. You know, him, Keno, Calvin Andrew, you know, Ian Henderson, Sammy Adelucci on the pitch at the end. Callum Camps, Matty Lunch showing some maturity playing as a four. So, listen, we're, we, we, we are at this moment in time between a rock and a hard place as a football club. You know, individually and collectively as a talented group, we are between a rock and a hard place. Because everybody thinks that we should be up at the top with the likes of Millwall, Sheffield United, you name it. But, it's very unrealistic for us to suggest that we can do that again like we did last season and the season before. Because time catches up with you. It certainly does. You know, that's why I've lost my ear. But, you know, we're trying to overachieve again and we've got to make sure that everybody understands that. It's all back to basics. We've got to retain our League One status and then build again. Back to back wins. First ever win away at Millwall for the football club in history. I know just a small task of Bolton on Tuesday. Well, it makes it a bit easier because we've got three points away from home. I think that's three league games without defeat. Four if you count the uh, Sunderland game. So we've got a little bit of momentum, but there's still one or two scars, scar tissue knocking around with respect to some of the mistakes that we're making. And for us to concede two and win a game at Millwall, you know, it, it is. We've got to give a lot of credit to the players' appetite, ability, and you know, never stay die attitude, which is superb, you know, but we need a little bit more than that, especially in the early stages of the game where Morrison and Gregory and O'Brien, they're electric and they got Williams passing, wow, you know, I, like I say, I admire Millwall, but I'm glad we've got three points.